Hi, my name is Alessandro Gangelosi and that's a new uh, tutorial coming from cgcookie.com for MaxCookie. In this tutorial we will talk about another new interesting feature uh, that we, we can have in uh, Krakatoa. You see I have uh, a simple uh, scene I'm working on and you see that we have a sphere made of particles moving inside an environment. You see that I'm using the PRT uh, loader from Krakatoa. Let's see how we can use it. Uh, this feature is really interesting because we can use uh, a different way to, sa uh, to render the particles just to save the particles. So let's imagine that we have for example a sphere and we have a particle system done with pflow. Uh, let's do a really simple setup Obviously, the uh, usage you can do of this feature is uh, are really amazing amount. So let's use a position object at the sphere, and you see that we have the particles going away. We'll use the random 3D, so we have particles going away there, and we say maybe 50. Sorry, 50 and maybe 10 for the variation and you see that we have particles going away uh, let's use the tick, uh, we go for point and we say that we have particles until 200 and we have 100% uh, of particles visible inside the viewport and we have maybe 20,000 particles so you see, we have a huge amount of particles, but not so huge for Krakatoa, you see, you know that we can use millions of particles. So let's imagine that we have these particles, and we have, uh, for example, a really uh, simple problem. Uh, let's imagine that we have, uh, let's close set 12 the particle emission, and we have the objects there. And we have, for example, then the animation for the sphere there. Okay, so you see that we have the sphere animated. Let's set there, and let's say that we have just 2000 to be faster. We set to on the particles, and you see that we have the particles moving in this way because the object is animated. We can also say that our shape is animated, but obviously the particles are following the animation. So if we like to have the particles locked to the to the to the sphere but not in this way because I don't like to have the particles locked. I like just to have the particles not having the dynamic due to the particle emission. Or for example if I like to work with the particles with modifiers or something like that, actually it's not possible. So uh, if we have an idea like this one we can imagine to have a clone of the sphere. Let's move it there. And this one is not animated, so remove this one. So you see we have the first one is animated, the second one no. Okay, uh, let's imagine so that we have, for example, maybe 200,000 particles, a huge amount, you see. And let's imagine that we have maybe uh, less particles, but emitted just in some points, so we can see better the particles. So surface, distant point, 10. And let's say that we have no variation. And let's say that we have... I like to have particles moving uh, in a particular way uh, so let's see for example like this for example that's really really simple you see really stupid but it will be useful so let's stay with this default value uh, we can go inside the Krakatoa renderer and inside the Krakatoa user interface you know that usually we uh, set the render there but there are other possibility and the first one is save particles to file sequence so 
as we uh, select this one we go in the save particles and we have to set the path uh, let's say that we'll save there in the CG cookie temp there in the A folder let's wait for the folder sequence there let's call it particles save and you see that all the other information are uh, written automatically actually we we don't mind about all the other possibilities it's just introduce the possibility to save the particles okay uh, let's go back there you see that now we have a, a red rectangle just to say uh, please remember that we are saving particles and we are not rendering particles so uh, one thing you have to remember is that actually we can uh, merge it, uh, save it but if you have later the PRT volume there you have to remember to remove the PRT loader or volume or something like that so actually we can do it so let's do save particles it is asking if you can uh, include all this layer we ask it for and we say yes but we have to say to use all the frames okay render it is done so actually we have the particles there so what we can do uh, we can set to off the particles going there through the objects we have Krakatoa and we have PRT loader let's create these objects you see that it will ask for the particles and we are uh, we are in the right folder so we ask for the first frame let's go at full screen close this one and this one and you see that we have something there that is moving and this one you see we have there the possibility to have the loader there if you like to see the rendering or the viewport so we can remove from the viewport or see in the render and we have a lot of parameters to load or not the particles there and actually we have for example the rendering 100% and load using render node 1% in the viewport let's say 100% so we have all the particles and you see that it is working in the right way so uh, actually uh, we have uh, some possibility for example I can link this one to the object so it can be moved and we have uh, for example other possibility is to use let's go there and let's go at the end and we can get the information so we have the the gizmo information and for example now you see that we are able to use modifiers as we are working with par uh, with normal uh, objects so for example I can add a noise and you see that we can manipulate particles as a normal mesh so if now we go to uh, render Let's zoom it. Uh, if we go now, and obviously we have the still the animation, but you see that we have the modifiers applied. We can also have the noise animation. And if we go there in Krakatoa, you have to remember to set Krakatoa back again to render. So we have to go there, render scene particles, and let's render it just one frame. So let's go there, common one and render obviously we have no light so we can see it just there in the alpha channel so you see that we have it and it's a really fast way because now we cache the particles so we don't need to use uh, pflow to see the particles again uh, one really uh, good uh, thing you have to remember is that if we like to change something inside the particles and resave it, uh, what we have to do is to pick the pflow set to enable, and you see that we have both. Obviously, uh, the pflow has no uh, modifiers. Um, if we go there in pflow and change something, for example, uh, let's imagine that we have. Uh, a different speed there let's imagine maybe 15 and we have 
maybe a little bit of divergence. So you see we have this one, you see that we have risk to receive the particles. You have to remember, and that's really important, that if you like to receive, you have to remember to or disable when you set to save, disable PRT loader uh, because actually it will save the P flow and the PRT too, so you have to both particles inside. Or you have to remember to select the uh, PRT, go in there, and you have to remove it. So you have no particles inside the preview or the render. So when we go there and we say, please save. Save particles, yes. Please rewrite. You see that it's saving. Okay, and then we go back there to this one, and we say viewport and render. You see that the particles is uh, are the new one. So we can select this one, set to off, and we have the new particles. So uh, it's a really uh, useful way to cache particles and then receive. And another interesting thing is that, uh, actually in a really simple way, if we uh, animate this one, for example, linking the particles, sorry, linking the particles to the sphere, you see that uh, we can, for example, also move there the particles just to have it uh, together. Uh, you see that the particles as its own animation and are not following this animation. If we link this one to these particles and we set to on this one, you see that it is completely different because it is following the object animation. So uh, that's a really uh, simple but interesting way uh, to cache the particles and then reload it inside uh, PRT loader from Krakatoa and then you can use whatever you want to change the stuff there. Uh, I think that we'll prepare in the future more tutorial related to the PRT loader and the PRT volume to see how we can use it in uh, complex uh, production stuffs. So it was just an introduction to see that we can save the particles to the cache and then reload using the PRT loader and use modifiers or whatever we, we want. So uh, for the moment that's all. Uh, we, we have uh, just introduced this way to use the particles. Maybe uh, really soon we'll see all the other informations we have there in the PRT loader and we'll see also the PRT volume and we'll see other possibilities we have with the other uh, plugins coming with uh, Krakatoa. So for the moment that's all and I hope to see you back on Max Cookie to check for new tutorial coming from cgcookie.com. Bye!